Hello. Hello. <laughs> it's been a while. We Long know time. This. It has been busy, busy life, busy craziness. But what did we do this past President's Day weekend? We went to Joshua Tree and did some boondocking in the 29 Palms area of California. Yay! And it was awesome, but it was a little bit of, uh, we had to get out of our comfort zone and pack everything up and get prepared so we could move this big panda, mm -hmm. the Brinkley, because we've been stationary for what, like three and a half months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got settled a little bit. And so a lot of, had to put some thought into, okay, we got to pack everything up and leave it with us when we go bean docking. So. Mm -hmm. And even with all our checklists after checklists after checklists, we still didn't leave till what, like noon? And then the next day, yeah, it was, we're supposed, we're supposed to leave that Saturday on morning, but we didn't end up leaving here until noon on Saturday, mm -hmm. which put us in the 29 Palms area pretty late. Yeah. So we got there and it was dark by the time we, I think we were, it was, the sun was going down. We went to 29 Palms to fill up and with fresh water because we went to boondock. Um, but the, sun was going down as we were filling up water and we got to the campsite and it was dark and Mr. Thomas over here was not a happy camper because he wanted to get there and set up a fire and cook a steak and do mm -hmm. all the things the first night but that didn't happen. Uh, just so you guys know you cannot use the microwave when you are just doing solar um, and you can't Oh, you have to switch the fridge to like the inverter button or something when you travel. So the fridge still runs. Just, you just have to turn These on. are questions that I had before. You only have to turn on the inverter. You okay. Don't switch the, you don't switch the inverter button. <laughs> yes. And you that turn on the button inverter. is under the stairs. And that switches it so that the fridge still runs and your food stays cold while you travel, mm. which is really nice. So that goes off of the solar then, I'm assuming. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, it runs off the battery so mm -hmm. um, if you have things that you plug in they will work so like a toaster just know know what kind of amps that it's going to pull it um, runs the batteries yeah, down you're gonna, quick you're going to see like how much uh battery will get energy be pulled from the battery so um, this is stock so we have two lithium batteries uh that are charged with solar and or the generator or shore power depending on how we're doing uh, but in a boondocking situation we're only going off solar or generator so you know the two batteries were sufficient i'll say we you know keeps the refrigerator cold keeps everything stored well we might turn on one or two lights but we do have to be mindful not to leave all the lights on all the time televisions will run the fireplace will not work we had space heaters but yep. again that, i was gonna mention that too <laughs> that also pulls a lot of energy we so. woke up we were cold and we plugged in two space heaters and they both somehow that like everything stopped working once the battery gets to a certain percentage uh, everything will cut off for the safety of the battery nope. so <laughs> we basically would get up in the morning we'd be running at about 35 percent of the battery remaining just to kind of give a little take a little edge off the cold we turn on space heater but it end up pulling all the energy from the battery so it cut out so we'd end up having to either waiting for the sun to come up to start charging or in our case we just decided to run the generator for a little while which charged it up pretty quick and it then we did. were on our way so within like an hour of the sun coming up the batteries went back up to close to 100 percent, which was really cool but i guess they just drain the batteries drain when you have your phones connected at night and your watches or whatever you have mm -hmm. plugged in overnight be mindful of that yeah so we can see docking. why people buy two additional lithium batteries mm -hmm. to go with the solar but we survived we got through it and it was fine <clears throat> uh but then so another thing with boondocking is the water pump. You have to use that to, you fill up fresh water right before you get to your site and then mm. you run the water pump. And so Thomas, what happened with the water pump? We're not going to go too in depth <laughs> on what was going on with the 
water pump. L long story short, I was underneath and spent about half of the day trying to figure out the yeah, water pump. It, it was just a valve that had been turned off by one of the RV techs that had been through. He had had a small link in our filtration system, so he apparently had turned off that valve, mm. and so that affected the performance of the pump. Mechanically, I can't say exactly everything that went along with that, but I know once the valve was turned back on, then the pump worked fantastic. So, yay! And then we had hot water, like that, so. and then we had a happier Thomas. Mm -hmm. And we didn't, we wanted to spend the whole day like hiking and exploring Joshua Tree as our first day there, and we didn't get to do that till like three o'clock in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And then at least we got, we did get one hike in. Mm -hmm. We went to like a mine. Or we didn't get all the way to the end of the the trail, but we did hike a little bit that mm -hmm. first day. So that was good. But also, in addition to that, like Thomas woke up sick the day we were supposed to travel, and he decided, "Mom, well, I'm just gonna travel anyways." Yep. But he was under the weather the I was entire time. To it, so I wasn't <laughs> going to not go. So and then too the, much time and effort into it. The day before we left, which we were only there Saturday, Three Sunday, nights. Monday, we left Tuesday. Yeah, so three nights, four days, but but yeah, the day before we left, that I started feeling sick, and then the day we left, I I got sick. So mm -hmm. literally all week this week, I've been sick. So yeah, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, the last day before we left, we did get to go into Joshua Tree and drive around, and we didn't get to hike like we wanted to, but at least we drove to some of the major sites. Of course, unhooked from the Brinkley, left it at the Bean Dock site, and uh, drove onto Joshua Tree and got to see a lot of really cool things. So, uh, for our Brinkley, the 40 foot in Joshua Tree, uh, they're only fit up to 35 feet. So it would not accommodate us, unfortunately. But plenty of boondock opportunities outside of the park, easy access onto it. So that's good. Yeah. We did some other cool stuff at, <clears throat> at our like boondocking site. We, well, I got a workout in when you were trying to do the water pump mm -hmm. stuff. <laughs> and then There's yoga on the back we deck. Did, yeah. Sunrise yoga, which was pretty, but it was chilly out there and the, Thomas was sick. <laughs> the first, the first official fire and mm -hmm. roasting marshmallows. Oh my gosh, finally got to get s'mores. Finally. Oh, and hot dogs. <laughs> I just want a s'mores. <laughs> Otherwise, we were able to uh, definitely, you know, propane gas on the inside was helpful. We could make our coffee via vent, French mm -hmm. press. I could cook anything I needed to inside the Brinkley as well. Set up in a beautiful location, had a great view of the desert. And, so, you know, and it was really nice and quiet out there. So mm -hmm. um, at any given time, we only had like two neighbors and everybody was very quiet and respectful and everybody kind of respect each other's uh, space so so all positives in my book so and yeah the stars were really really pretty it was very clear so that was pretty cool too and the last potential well it wasn't really bad but it could have been potentially bad we were hearing about storms that were coming into southern california and if you followed the news recently, Southern California has had a ton of rain mm -hmm. and it's a lot of it, the ground is saturated with water already. And we knew that could potentially be a problem coming back with road closures and not, and not being able to make it back. So we elected to get up as early as we could on that last day. And uh, we actually took a longer route that went south uh, to try to get around the storm and uh that ended up working out pretty good so we did have to go up this really sketchy narrow twisty turny <laughs> high elevation road uh with the 40 foot trailer so it definitely tested my ability to yes. drive a vehicle that side but it turned out good no issues whatsoever i just took it slow everything was on high alert and high focus so we we're able to get it up the mountain no problem the ford performed amazing had no problem pulling up the panda up the mountain uh, worked out pretty good on that end and i'll probably say we only had a few little issues with things falling down in here some decorative items but um, oh yeah we had made some modifications in certain mm -hmm. areas where we tried to secure drawers and cabinets things that we have heard have had had been issues but 
we ended up being creative and, and finding some new ways that we could secure them. And that mm -hmm. seemed to work out pretty good. So I was very happy with the way that we were able to secure our items in transit. The combination of just good driving, good planning, thinking out things beforehand was very crucial and, you know, making sure that we keep things that are precious to us intact. So uh, we did get lucky because there were some items from Japan that fell that we would not been able to replace. Yeah, that don't trust the putty stuff <laughs> because, yeah, some of the stuff up on the mantle above the TV did fall down. So I can't see it's over um, there. So no more putty we'll trust. Cut away for the stuff that fell right now. Yeah. And Daisy had lots of adventures and she had adventures and she even had her little spike coyote vest on. Mm -hmm. So no coyotes could get her yep. and she could just roam around free in the boondock life. And she loved it. So far, so good. No, Although we no, still watched her like a there's, hawk. There's really no excited. attempts on her life by any coyotes or anything like that. So. Yeah. And the roads in California are so full of potholes. And so we were, <laughs> when we first left and hitting all the potholes, luckily Thomas was driving slow because we have our entire household in this thing now for the first time ever. I'm traveling with it all. And I was just like cringing every <laughs> pothole, is freaking out. I'm questioning if this lifestyle is for me. Every pothole we go over, I cringe. <laughs> I'm a nervous wreck. Does it get easier if you're a professional uh, RVer? Does it get easier? <laughs> Let me know. Since nothing broke this trip, it gives me a little more confidence in traveling. So there's that. And yeah, going up that mountain was super intimidating, but he, he like handled it like a champ. And I was very, very thankful. I was praying the entire time that we didn't go <laughs> flying over the edge, but <laughs> it was crazy. That was a lot of curse words for praying. There were so many curves and so we were so high up. <laughs> she didn't get it. Did I curse? I didn't curse. <laughs> yes. All in all, Joshua Tree was beautiful. I think we're both glad we did it, even though we had some setbacks. I um, think it was going to mm. happen. But we really needed this trip to like get out of our comfort zone mm. uh, and do the things that we have saying we want the RV life for. I mean, we're living full time in it, so we need to get out and enjoy it. The absolute best part was going to your own bed at night, no matter what. You didn't have to go yeah, and pitch a tent and yeah. anything like that you didn't have to get a hotel room and sleep in a strange bed it was your bed and you just go right back into your house and i mm -hmm. think daisy appreciated that as appreciated that as well mm -hmm. uh, even though no matter where we were going different places she just came right back to her own little bed and she was happy yeah. me too that's so. right and i think the more you do it the easier it's gonna become because like i said it took us a long time to leave but then the morning we mm -hmm. left because of the storm, we were able to pack up and get out of there pretty quick, actually. Mm -hmm. And we still got so. a lot of growing to do in that area and how to be efficient. So, mm -hmm. um, so which we'll hopefully learn how to do and pass along and learn from others who've done it before us. So, uh, which is kind of the <laughs> the way you do things in life. Okay, Anything bye. Else? Yeah, thanks for watching and hit that subscribe button <laughs> yeah smash that like and subscribe button <laughs> yeah and we'll come it. out with more videos as we go